Hi, Al. I'm Alexander Mann. I'm Alexander Sandalis. We're Jungle Beats. We are Jungle Beats. Australia's plug to the best in the world. We also give amazing tips with, uh, with, with uh, sexual tips, uh, uh, trigonometry, uh, floral. What you know about that? Fashion. What you know about that high pot news? Man, I know the sin cause and I know the Ooh, tan. I'm the tan? Yo, boy, I know Tell the tan. Em. That's all I know. Man, I know the difference between isosceles, a scaling, Ooh, and of shit. course that equilateral. You Ooh. know what I'm saying? I know all the fuck. fucking triangles and my shit, man. And how much are they helping you in your job? Now? Absolutely none whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> or this, the business. <laughs> Zero. Goose Vic egg. Mensa. We the just dropped, We just dropped the manuscript. <laughs> which... It got like two views. <laughs> but it's okay. Because we didn't start this to get fucking views on fucking YouTube. We started this to start a business. Not really, that's not really initially how it started though. Nah, it was more to start. The business love, is a byproduct. We just, love, we just love music. For real though. I mean, so, you know, if whatever happens, happens with those videos, whatever, they get one view mm. or a million. Um, but you gotta feel the music. Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Vic. Yeah, which they know since the, uh, the manuscript EP, which was massively delayed, but it was out. This one, not as delayed, but still delayed. It's okay. Um, I'm gonna get it out there. But Just you wait. the min manuscript and the autobiography, the concepts are linked, are they not? They're linked. I thought maybe he was going to go like another manuscript too, EP. But I kind of don't get it because he put out the manuscript and he put out the autobiography album about, what, a month later? Two mm, months later? Uh, two, three. Two, three months later. Like, I kind of, I guess to keep fans relevant, but three of these tracks on this album, two are bonus tracks, but three, I was just thinking like, wouldn't you just rather just release the album? Instead of putting the manuscript EP out? I don't know. I don't know the... Really I, don't, I don't know the way that was thinking behind it, but either way, I'm very happy because this is like the first Vic Mensa album. If you don't include an under tape and uh, kids these days and all this other stuff like mixtapes, whatever, this is first that he's actually charging for money, so... Go excited. Get, excited. You, get your money. Pay big, bills. Big, big Big host for this man. Uh, I'm excited. I'm very excited. Well, we got a... 13 track album Good, minus sure, the bonus so tracks yeah, and yeah, no bonus tracks and we've only heard one track on this album correct which i'm a big fan of, which was my favorite track on the ep so we're gonna start off with didn't i brackets say i didn't vic men to the water biography jungle beats please support us on patreon if you can check out the rewards you might like one or none let's get it Ty Dollar on the intro too. On the intro? That was Ty Dollar at the end. At the end, yeah. 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 Bro. And um, for those who don't know the, the sample, that's uh, I'm pretty sure it's Durondo. I uh, didn't I? I'm pretty sure the track. Quick me if I'm wrong, of course, but it's a big, big, beautiful song. I love it. Very, very beautiful song. 
I mean, owed to his mom, owed to his grandma. I oh, love man. when it's it's. And then you talk about Kanye late registration. That feels. sounded that gave me massive late registration. Kanye West feels like even the way that he was sort of rapping, mm. and just like you know, in, rapping for Chicago, and mm. just the, the, like this is sort of uh, instrumentals that Kanye was mixing around that sort of era, college dropout, late registration era. So, uh, fucking awesome. That's such a great opener. Really good track. Feels like an anthem. Definitely, man. I really like that. I was. I was. That was. That was good. I'm a very happy man right now. I'm a very happy man. It's like he's just letting everything off his chest. <sighs> That's what you do in an autobiography, I guess. Better. Uh, next track, Memories on 47th Street. And we notice 47th Street, uh, the, in the, in the, album? In the album cover above the mm. window. Where just he grew up? I'd say so. Okay. Memories. Memories. coming up next mm. which makes sense about him talking about the, the abuse it's coming into the next track mm. I dig that track as well at first I wasn't sure on the hook but it grew on me plus that was Vic on the hook like he's, he's just talented man the way that he can manipulate his voice mm. really talented and the verse is about uh, you know like being 12 bringing out the difference between black and white cop pushed him over to like you know nearly dying waking up and then although well, there was a cheesy line about trying to take over the world like pinky in the brain i was like i'm not familiar with that cartoon uh two two the two rats that try and take over the world right but uh yeah i love the instrumentation i love the passion of the storytelling it's the storytelling not, it's not yes. necessarily like like huge intense memories of all they just a lot of them are just like just memories just things that just shaped who he was like, mm. that's part of the road. little things are just like the first time he smoked weed first, like people just selling crack like on the, on the street like they're just little things that just shape him up into who the man is today mm. and the decisions that he made so uh, a couple things um first of all when a man tells a story like this you just want to listen i'm just trying to listen yeah i'm listening I'm, he's really got me engaged I'm, I, the whole the whole song i was just like really trying to pay attention and it takes a lot to make me pay attention <laughs> but it's it kind of working though isn't it it's working and I'm, I'm uh, i don't work. know if you saw the interview i linked to so Vic Mensa did an interview with Big Boy. Um, did you see that? Which one was that one? Big Boy's Neighborhood um, radio interview. I think so. I watched uh, a lot of his interviews. Well, basically, the recent one after this dropped, um, and he explained... I don't know if you heard that Lollapalooza line where he got hit with 15,000 volts and nearly died. Um, so that's actually a real story, as you would imagine. But what's that story about? If you don't know, uh, I'm going to shorten it. Vic Mensa, um, he was with a girl... And he, there were pla he snuck into Lollapalooza on the first day, um, and then he was with this girl um, who we liked. She didn't have a phone or anything. I don't think she spoke very good English. I think, correct me if I'm wrong. And then he tried to sneak into Lollapalooza, Lollapalooza again, except they beefed up the security a lot. So he couldn't really sneak in the same way he snuck in last time. But she was already in, I think. And he said, no, he said, I'll meet you here at this time. And he's like, fuck, I gotta get in there because, you know, she doesn't have, she doesn't know anybody. She doesn't speak very good English. She doesn't have a phone, blah, blah, blah. So he climbed the fence and something, climbed onto this bridge to jump in. He ended up falling off, uh, falling down onto this, this thing that hit him with 15,000 uh, volts of electricity. Um, he nearly died, woke up in a hospital um, and mm -hmm. got, got a scar somewhere to, to show it. But uh, basically explaining that this man shouldn't 
really be alive. That's not. That's a shock that usually would kill somebody. Yeah, that would kill a lot of people. Or seriously injure somebody. Maybe that's kind of like one of the things that happened in his life to really push him towards what he's doing now. Like he just feels like this is my chance. I've been I've been given the second chance to really do this shit. Yeah, especially most people that get really big or have a lot of passion or have that drive. Normally, there's something in their life that drove them to that. A series of events, maybe. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to share that for those who didn't know. I like this shit. Yeah! I play that song a lot. It's probably my favorite track from the manuscript. I listen to I listen to EP a lot. Mm. Like every track on there bangs. Every mm. track on there is good, and it fits in here perfectly once again. Yep. Uh, from the from the little skit at the end of the last track to go through his his lifestyle, his choices, his addictions, and how he's living that. But then the fact that like he may be talking about it a lot, he may be expressing it a lot, but it's a problem, and it's probably going to kill him. Hmm. I got zero qualms with this song. Got zero qualms with any of these songs so far. I fuck with that. Let's go. It's my boy, San Dallas. Homewrecker featuring Weezer. She said everything you say is a lie. I text you and you never reply. Sometimes I wish I could have been with a regular guy. All these kids in the cross street, they all like that. Like a puppet in the pedal, and you know I'm a snap. I guess this shit is since the sex in the morning. Judging by the way she kept texting the car. Once again, storytelling's on point. Super dope. But I still find it funny though, because like, he starts off with him, he's, he's with this other girl, right? His yes. wife is out, his wife, he gets back, and he's like, fuck. So he hides the other girl in the bathroom, and then the girl's like, knows something going on. So she looks around and finds the used condom, and then Vic's just like, well, fuck. I'm fucked here. So it's kind of funny because Vic's kind of like, playing on him fucking up because he's obviously cheating on her but then that he should know better knowing that this chick's crazy and that she probably would have found out anyway mm. so it's kind of I don't know like he's kind of like giving this girl shit but he's also like acknowledging that he's just as bad but I don't, I don't know I'm sort of I sort of know how to feel about this track because I really enjoy the storytelling and I I enjoy like a lot of this but Vic He's, Vic makes it sound this song like he's sort of the victim. You think so? You think that's how he's trying to portray oh, it a little bit? I don't know if that's the right word. I saw like he sort of portrays it like he's like he, he knows he's in the wrong, but he's also kind of like making it seem like this girl's crazy. Right, so right, it's, right, like right. it doesn't so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, or it doesn't matter but as much. I think so. But at the end of the day, like cheating, sort of cheating. But mm -hmm. I just feel like in this way he displays it in a way of like you know it shouldn't matter as much as it does. Like maybe his views on it are just. Different. I don't know. Like he does admit, like he fucked up. 
and he should have known this needs more lessons I think so I think it needs more lessons I think I need to pay more attention but that's kind of the vibe I got from it either way I, I'm, I'm engaged it's so because in my head I was picking the whole shit I'm like yeah. oh yeah oh shit what's happening next oh shit like, oh she got the knife oh no she doesn't and like the instrumental wasn't that good but the instrumental like because it was that little bit more simple like, like it, made me, yeah. it made me listen more yeah. because it because it, it wasn't too much going on it made yeah. me pay more attention so I could understand it's the way that choice. was crafted I think so as well it's my choice so that, that's definitely gonna need another listen I, I quite enjoyed the storytelling with that same but you said everything damn Vic <laughs> you crazy you crazy I didn't realise she was that crazy <laughs> uh, gorgeous featuring Sid ooh internet represent that continues straight on from the last track. yeah so it's conceptual very I just, and it's also funny like the way that he's talking about like he's with he's with the girl now he's fucked up so he's destroyed the place taking his car but he's gonna make it up so he's gonna take her somewhere there was some horny fucking lies there though what about like, his other girl well that's the thing he says that everywhere he goes he keeps seeing his ex and he wants both of them fuck like he's constantly wanting both of them that's tough but like <laughs> that's tough bro Tough shit. The thing about having side girls, you man. Ain't a qu- you ain't a king in Siberia. You can't get 39 women. Yeah. <laughs> well, not here. But at the end of the day, it's just like, she's gorgeous, so he'll just do anything at the time for her. So it, I, it's just showing that, yeah, he just, he just loves women too much. I love women too. So do you. Pussy is good. Ah, you said pussy, not women. Interesting. Women's good. Pussy's still good. They're different. They're both good. Heaven on Earth, featuring the dream. What up, Cam? It's your little bro. Been a while since we spoke, but it's hit it for. Yeah, the other day I saw your sister, bro. Sad it had to be at another funeral. That was a while song. Same when they took pride from us. When I heard they stabbed him in the sides, he was a good nigga. Oh shit. 
I just realized. Please. So the first verse is his perspective. Like he, he starts it off like, oh, I saw your sister, but it was at your funeral. And goes on about like how he's gone, how he didn't deserve it. And the second verse is from Cam's perspective. Cam's the person that died. The second one's from Cam's perspective and how like, he's like, oh, I'm in heaven. You know, like things are going good up here. I heard your song, Holy Holy, which is from a nanotape. It's dope. Kurt Cobain heard your song. He likes your shit. I quite like that. It's kind of like, like, yeah, Kurt would like my shit. <laughs> And then, and then the third verse is from the perspective of the man that killed Cam. He's like, remember he starts with, hey, little Vic, you don't know me, but I got a tip from this man. I got a tip from someone that, mm. you know, this guy's got like all this weed and stash. And, you know, it's the girl who called, like took the gun so he had nothing on him. And he's like, oh, we went there, got all this shit. And remember how he said, I just had a kid. Cam, well, he just like got a kid. So he's like, and so he's like basically getting there. They're taking all this shit and then they end up shooting him because they thought that like he... He was gone for a gun, even though they knew that he didn't have one on him, but they still thought, you know, because hood mentality. And they killed him. So the, th the last verse was the person that killed Cam from his point of view about why he did it. I'm not sure if that's exactly true or mm. Vic knows that, but that's just the way that Vic's portrayed it. And it's really well done. The storytelling so far on this album is... Exceptional. Exceptional, man. Exceptional. Really fucking good. Like, that's fucking, like, that's like a fucking... It's not as good as obvious as Eminem's stand, but it's the same sort of way of it. Like Eminem's perspective is a stand's perspective to like, you know, back to the writing back and forth. So the perspective of him, the perspective of Cam, the perspective of the killer, that's a really fucking good track, man. Really good track. I feel, yeah. Thanks for um, summarizing that. It's all good. I don't, I don't normally pay attention, man, but- yeah, How can you not? But like with tracks like this, I'm really just how fucking, I'm, I'm delved into these tracks. Like these reactions aren't us getting around. You know how your problem with Logic to everybody was that he, should have done more of this, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, because at the end of this, he's, he's, still, he's still doing the spoken word, but it's a small doses that and it's in connects rap. the next track. And it's it, in rap. Exactly, whereas Logic was just like four minutes of just talking. talking. Like, if he did it like this, with those sort of beats, we'd have an album like this. That's what Potentially. I'm saying. Uh, card crack a skit <sighs> into Down for Some Ignorance, uh, Ghetto Lullaby, featuring shit. Oh, Chief Keith? Chief Keefin and Joey Perp. What up, folk? Maintain it, girl. Damn, your ass been flexing hard as hell, shorty. Bunch of birds, parrots, parakeets, gluten free hills, 10 gallons of mouth salt. <laughs> You know, I didn't expect to have good features with Chief Keef, Joey Perp, because they're both from Chicago, so representing Chicago. But it was quite nice. Like they just had, I'm pretty sure it was Chief Keef on the on the hook, mm. and then Joey Perp was on the uh, uh, at the start, just before the just before, because it was like someone on the hook and then someone just before the hook with the with the lower sort of distorted sort of vocals. So yeah, I didn't mind the features. It weren't too much, you know. It was minimal. It was enough. Like exactly, it was enough, and uh, I, I didn't mind it. That to me so far, that there, there hasn't really been. A, a bad track neither yep I mean that's the only one that wasn't like really storytelling it was just in there to just feel Down good some ignorance it's just a part of who Vic is it's like he's told some stories it's kind of like he's trying to forget what happened because he lost someone really close to him this is him just being like maybe this is what made him turn into the person he was after that happened losing someone close to him coffee and cigarettes next track get it coffee and cigarettes remind me of you babe I recently realized 
Why are you smiling? I don't know. I just, it's really cool because Vic is showcasing that he can sing. But I feel like the way the direction this album's take, I would have preferred it if he didn't sing. Kept stick to rapping? Yeah, but that's kind of why I liked he did add that rap verse at the end there because it made me come back. Because the whole time I was sitting there going, I see what you're doing here. I see it tying in, but like, I'm just not really feeling it. But then when the rap verse came in there, I'm like, all right, all right, I'm, I'm cool now. It's a bit more corny of that, that theme right there. Vic's a corny rapper that you got to remember. <laughs> I, I like corny lines, so as soon as you hear them and people cringe... This is where me and Fantano differ. Like, he'd probably, he'll probably hate this album because he hates coyness, whereas I fucking love it. I don't think he'll hate this album. Reckon? I, don't, I think this will be one of his favorites. You reckon? Yep. He's never rated Vic good. I think this might be an exception. You reckon we'll get like a good seven? Light six to a, to a decent seven. I'll be happy with a light six. I can see him giving this a light six to a decent seven. But yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. That's definitely a song where I wasn't massive on it, but like, yeah, we'll see where we go. All right, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Next track, Wings, featuring Pharrell Williams and Saul Williams. Double the Williams. Transitions are smooth. Except that time. <laughs> track you really were at himself didn't you hear it no i don't remember he was um getting to a stage where he was just like when he went back to like how he nearly died then he just started just really fucking hating on himself and just getting angry hmm. but i guess that's where the wings come in just like you know Trying to fly exactly catch yourself from death catch yourself from save suffering. yourself from self-destruction hmm. it seems like he's bored on that many times yeah, definitely. That's where a lot of this album is going around. Constantly the self-destruction. Or reflecting on what could have been. Mm. Is that another triple X track? Sounds like the baby's in the street. It is in the street. Next track? Your next track. Heaven on Earth. Reprise. I see, it's kind of like a chill track. I'm see a re for my, I don't know what reprise means again, but normally when tracks are reprising, it's like a, a remake. Like, because I remember Big Crit did Mount Olympus reprise. It was like the same song, but it was just a different instrumental. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So it was so, like, it was the same song with the same meaning, but just a different instrumental. Okay, so, so linking back to the earlier track, Heaven on Earth. Yeah. I mean, we'd have to link it back to see the connection, but he's talking about a gun it's to his of, mouth. Yeah, kind of like, maybe it's drawing back to like, it's kind of like he, killed himself again and was drawn back or maybe he nearly killed himself again a second time so it's kind of like a reprise of going back to like coming mm. back to earth from heaven or coming back to earth from a darkness that he was trapped in like okay I don't know there's a lot I'm taking a lot in from this album and I'm also missing a lot as well as per usual <laughs> but I feel like I'm taking a lot more than I normally I agree I definitely think you are um second last track The Fire next time we talk, he talked about Fire he was this mentioning track. yeah yeah the, in between these tracks the connections between them have been pretty good so far which I'm a big fan of with albums out of the fire out of the fire inside you can see the pain still alive in my eyes I can't I can't I can't be stopped now it wasn't easy but I learned the hard way to be taken out Change the 
Shit. Pretty good track. It's like we it's like a light at the end of the tunnel. Exactly. It's That's like we're seeing. coming out. The reprise came back, heaven, back to earth. I've been given the second chance or third chance or whatever the fuck. I'm gonna fucking take what's mine. A bit of optimism. I can't be stopped now. It kinda it's kinda at that point where I'm not sure what, what point of his life it was, but it was a point where he realized that like he, he fucked up that many times and like he's he's really gonna fucking make it work make it right this time. Oh he may not get another chance. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, the was it he saw the fire and found the fire inside? Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good track. I was pretty happy with that. I think it's, it seems like we're tying the album together. And maybe this last track will tie the bow. We could be free featuring Ty Dollar Side. Yeah, and Ty Dollar started off the album as well, so mm. nice thing. I like when artists do little things like that. Huh. We could be free. Free. I said that right. Vic Mensa. It's a beautiful ending. It's a really nice finishing track. Just it touching. ties a bow. It just that's it. it that's concludes really the well. album. Uh, very good. Very very fucking happy with this album. Yes. Definitely gonna need a lot more listens. Yes. Uh, the storytelling phenomenal. <laughs> what was that? Phenomenal. <laughs> the the tying from track to track to track really well done. Instrumentations are quite different. But they all, all sort of work here. A lot of singing, a lot of rapping, a different voice manipulation on here, a lot of features, but a lot of the feet. What I would realize this album is that every single feature on this album are tiny and they, 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 they're kind of in the shadow of Vic's mm. storytelling. Vic's always, Vic's very smart with the way he's done these features because he's always the center of attention. He's not being a feature take control. The features are just adding to the story, they're just in the background. The compliments. Exactly. Which I really like. So a lot of features, but they're just small, they're just there. It's all about Vic and his story right here. And, uh, yeah, I just love his brutal honesty with a lot of these tracks. A lot of the things he talks about, a lot of people wouldn't want to bring up. Not in this blunt about. way, not in this transparent way. Exactly, so... They'll allude to it, mm. but they won't. They won't admit it. Say it like this, not often. Yeah, so, very fucking happy. Favourite tracks would definitely be uh, the storytelling one with the back killer cam. Oh, Homewrecker. Homewrecker? Yeah. Homewrecker was really good. Right I fucking love the intro it. track, Say I Didn't. Didn't I Say? Didn't I Say? say that I was didn't. an amazing track. Uh, I definitely liked probably more the first half than the second half, but mm -hmm. probably because the second half was a bit slower, but it was still really good in tying the album. Uh, still love Rolling Like a Stoner. Amazing. The bonus track, Rage, also really good. Uh, I don't know if I can remember much else. I just, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Pretty damn happy. Can't wait to let's do it again. You've encapsulated most of the thoughts that I was gonna say, except that I think this is one of the best conceptual albums of this year. Yeah. Um, I can see this definitely climbing my favorites. One of the most cohesive, uh, concept and story wise. You see the tracks often tied into each other, which I love, love, love when mm. artists do that. And just the story to them between with the writing. Because it takes you on a trip. It takes you on an on, on a adventure. Right. You don't see us dancing, you don't see us getting wild. We're just constantly just sitting there paying attention, track by track, mm -hmm. just seeing what Vic's been through, seeing what he's got to teach us. Mm -hmm. 
kind of learn from his mistakes. Mm. Or I think this is this is music. This was probably made just as much for him as it is for us, if not more for him, as an autobiography, as a catharsis, mm. as just a release, an outlet. And also, he can just go back to it if he ever loses himself in a way. Right. Yeah, if you if you haven't listened to Vic Mance before, I recommend going back to uh, Inanna Tape. And if you really want to go further back and go to the kids these days, his uh, his family he had. But Inanna Tape to me is his best work. This could overtake it sometime, but Inanna Tape's crazy. And also, um, there's a lot going on. It's really good as well. So yeah, it is. The main criticism I have would be the 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 middle the middle part of the album. I think he could just continue the concept instead of adding in maybe track eight to ten. Um, while they are good tracks in themselves, I don't think they add anything to the overall theme concept. Yeah. I, it was more like feelings and storytelling than that part of it. It was more just like... It's a bit distracting from maybe the overall message, mm. which maybe there's a purpose beyond I don't understand. Yeah. But no, that, that's a good point. But like it, It's not needed, but for him, I guess it was needed in a way that you know other people might understand. Potentially. Mm-hmm album ties in well concludes well starts it's, it's good it's a very good album mm. and it's probably going to be a top 10 album for me I anticipate yeah I'm not sure about easily. top 5 but probably top 10 I'd say Vic Mensa you did a hell of a job I'm not even a, that big a fan of you but I got a lot more respect for you right now fuck yeah Vic you did your thing I still got mad belief in you man I don't know this definitely isn't going to be the album that puts you up there no but. no no but it's going to get you respect from the hip-hop heads. Oh, yeah. uh, at least for me. Yeah, at least for me. You still got work to do, Vic. But you'll get there, man. I feel it. I feel it. Keep doing your thing. Hopefully Chris Palmer likes this album because he doesn't really like Vic. I'm going I'm to convert him. I'm going to convert that man. Jungle Beast, thank you for watching. Thank you very much. More coming at you. Love, love, love. You. Been through more lows than you can imagine Flew higher than most, I'm always traveling Been places that you never been twice Winning all around the world, I'm victory lapping